Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to gradually scale or pan over time to simulate slider or zooming shots in Premiere Pro out of your static tripod or time-lapse clips. So I've got a couple things on the timeline. I've got some time-lapses that I've shot, and this will also work great with anything that's shot statically on a tripod, so anything where you're not moving the camera handheld, and any photographs. This is great to add life to slideshows of pictures as well. So let's begin on this first clip is the timeline. And if we click and highlight the clip, we can go over to the effects control panel. And this is where we can adjust any of the positional keyframes over time. So if we click the stopwatch icon on the scale, let's move over all the way to the beginning first and click that icon. You see it creates a keyframe at 100% scale. So what we can do is start at 100 and then by the end of the clip, we can gradually increase it up to something like 105 or 110. Now one thing to keep in mind is, yes, this is going to be zooming in on your 1080p or whatever resolution your sequence is clips. So you might experience a slight loss in quality if your original clip isn't high enough. Of course, you're not always going to have 4K footage to work with. If you did have higher resolution footage like 4K, then you'd have more room to zoom in and work around. But I think anything under 10% really is not noticeable. And you can see it adds this nice effect where it pulls your eye in towards the center as the keyframes transition from 100 to 110, which can bring some life to your static time lapses or shots. So here's another example. We have the clouds and another thing you can do is start at a higher amount. So you could start at 110, add a keyframe there, and then at the end of the clip, go down back to regular size, which is 100. And that'll give you a kind of a zooming out time lapse effect that slowly brings more of the picture into frame. But let's say instead of zooming in or out, you wanted to pan to the left or right, and you didn't have a slider, you didn't use a slider, we can add a little bit of left to right or right to left panning using the same idea. However, in this case, we're just going to zoom in on the clip a little bit. So 110 I'll do just to give us some working room. So if you zoom out here on the preview window, basically what we've done is we've zoomed in. So we have a little bit of extra clip on the edges for us to pan left or right onto before that black edge shows. So we can move over until we don't have a black edge, set our positional keyframe there, and then move over to the end of where we want to start sliding and set the positional keyframe to the other end, but make sure you don't have any black bar showing. Also, it's a good idea to work in fit mode so you see the whole window, or if you want to go to 100%, you can see exactly what quality you're looking at. So when I play that back, you see we get a slight right to left panning motion, which adds some movement to the camera for our still frame shots. Now the same idea can be applied to photographs, however this is actually a lot easier because a lot of times if you're shooting RAW or whatever camera you're using, it's actually going to be a lot larger than a 1080p file, which is great because you see we're super scaled in and we already have a whole bunch of working room so we can do things like zoom out gradually or pan left to right gradually or pan up and down gradually. And that can make your static slideshows a lot more interesting if you're doing voiceovers over still photographs and whatnot. So those are the two basic, the position and scale. But feel free to experiment with other things. You could do slight rotations on certain anchor points if that'll add some life. You could do that while zooming in. You can combine zooms and pans. But that's the basics of using keyframes to adjust the position or scale over time to fake some camera movements in post-production. If you guys like this video, definitely leave a big like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments and make sure you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my new future videos. You can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho to stay in touch with me. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.